I've always been able to make time for the things I value. And that is today's Morning Moxie. Welcome to the Morning Moxie show. I am your host, Alicia Sharp, and today we have Bill Hybels on the show. I think this is his first time actually being on the show, and um, I really like his message today. He's talking about um, just meeting with God every day and how important it is to sit down and just spend time with God because God just speaks to you during those times when you just sit with Him and talk to Him and fellowship with Him and how important it is. I know for me, that time with the Lord is so amazing and refreshing, and I love spending time with Him because He's just like my best friend, and there's nobody like Him, and I'm so thankful for His presence in my life, so thankful for His friendship, and so thankful for His guidance, and I pray, you know, I don't know where you stand with the Lord, how your relationship is with Him, and Bill talks about your chair. Where's your chair? And he'll explain more about that in this story. It's great. Here's Bill. An advertising executive came down to talk to me after a service, and he had just become a Christian. I had, I had baptized him at the church, and so, and uh, he said, I, I just can't make time for a meeting with God. He said, you have no idea what it's like to commute downtown every day, and you live in a different world. I, I can't, I just can't fit, it, fit that kind of thing into my life. And I remember looking at this young guy, hard-charging young guy, and, and I said, here's my experience, and I'm not, you know, I'm only like 24 years old, so there it is. I said, I've always been able to make time for stuff I value. Just how my life works. If I value something, I'll make time to experience it. If I don't, I won't. And I'm making time for a meeting with God in my life. You do it any way you want. And uh, he wasn't too happy with me that day, I don't think, and I didn't see him for a while. And then afterwards, I saw him many months later, and when he came down to talk to me, he, his countenance was different. He felt different. His conversation was different. And he invited Lynn and me, he and his wife invited Lynn and me to go over to their house for dinner. So we accepted. He lived right in the area. And so we go over to their house, and uh, as we're kind of just having some appetizers beforehand, he takes me over to a rocking chair. And he says, you know how you challenged me to have a meeting with God and to just to make the time? He said, I, I've, I love rocking chairs, so I bought a good one. And you said that maybe if you're going to make this repeatable and enjoyable, you should look at some scene or vista that you enjoy looking at. And he said, I've got a little backyard here, and I love looking over the backyard. So he said, I, I just bought this chair, and I put it in, at my favorite window where I can overlook the backyard. And he said, I got up a half hour earlier, 15, 20 minutes, half hour earlier each day the last several months. I sit in the chair. I have a cup of coffee. And he goes... I read God's word, I try to make sense of it, I ask him to speak to me by his word, then I meditate on it, reflect it, apply it to my life, then he said I write some thoughts down in a journal and I pray, I pray that I will be more aware of his presence in my life. And I said, how's, how's that going for you? And his wife jumped in and said, I'll tell you how it's going for him, he's a changed guy. What happens to him when he sits in that chair, has changed him. He's more centered. He's a more gentle and loving man in our marriage and to our children. I was very impressed with this, that he could show me his chair, that he had taken the time, that he had fashioned a meeting with God that he looked forward to because he liked the chair, he liked the view, he liked the coffee, he was a morning guy, and he fell into this pattern. Many months later, uh, I had coffee with him one time, and he said, I'm thinking about leaving my job in advertising. He said, it just, it, um, I think I'm done with that. So where'd you get these ideas? And he said, well, in my meetings with God in the chair. That's, he's been putting those thoughts in my mind. I said, what are you going to do? And he said, well, maybe I'll just help you build the church. I said, well, no one's getting paid around here, you know. And he said, well, I've done pretty well in advertising. I can hold on for a while, and, and uh, maybe if the church grows, you know, then maybe they can help me and my family in some way. 
And I said, well, you better go back to that chair and see if God's really in this because I don't want to take responsibility for your life and all this. And he said, okay, I will. And came back about a month later and he said, you know, I gave notice at, at work. And if it's all the same to you, I'm just going to help you start building the church. You pay me what you can, but it's not a concern of mine. And this guy joined our staff, and I'm telling you, he was a hardworking, energized, joyful, uh, industrious individual that really, really helped our church and was on our staff for many, many years. One of the best staff members in the early days of the church. Then one day he comes into my office and he said, you know, I, I still do that meeting with God in that chair, that rocking chair. And he said, God's been stirring in my life in my meetings with God. And he said, a friend of mine starting a brand new church in Colorado. And I think I'm going to pack my family up and move to Colorado. I said, can they support you? He said, no, I'm going to have to go back into the marketplace and uh, make some money because they, they can't afford anything. And uh, I said, you, are you ready to do that? And he said, you know, every morning I talk to God about it. And he said, I'm really fired up about it. So we said goodbye to him and he packed his family up and he went out and he went back into advertising, made a lot of money and gave most of it to the startup church. And it became a fantastic church. And then in that same chair that he moved out to Colorado, sitting at a window in the morning like he had done for many, many years now, he processed a bad medical report he got from the doctor that cancer had come his way. And he kept working and he kept supporting that church and uh, he got sicker and sicker. It was a very fast spreading kind of cancer. And uh, then he was hospitalized and one of the great losses he felt when he was in the hospital is that he didn't have his chair. And he died quite soon thereafter, and I did his funeral in Colorado. And I was talking to his widow, his wife, uh, at the funeral reception afterwards. I said, that was something about that chair, wasn't it? She said, his whole life changed in that chair. I said, what are you going to do with the chair? And she said, we are going to pass that chair on to our children and on to our grandchildren in the hopes that someone would sit in it like Tom did and have their life transformed. Simple question, gang. Where's your chair? Where do you meet with God? Where do you reflect on his word and open yourself to his power? Where, where do you become aware of his presence in your life? Where is that? And some of you go, well, you know, I mean, I don't have a nice backyard to look out on. It doesn't work for me. It, the thing about the unlimited presence of God is that you can meet with him anywhere. Your chair can be anywhere. When we first started, Lynn and I first started taking our summer study breaks in South Haven, that little town on the other side, uh, we rented a one-bedroom cottage in the summer times, and so it was chaos with two kids in, in that cottage. So I would leave and I would go to the Burger King in the morning for 30, 40, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. First booth on the right when you come in the door, Main Street in South Haven. I did that little practice for nine years. Fiberglass booth in a Burger King. I made some of the most important ministry and personal decisions in my life. Fiberglass booth in a Burger King. To this day when I drive by that Burger King, I look at it and I go, man, God met me there. There's a carpenter in this church that meets with God every morning in the front seat of his pickup truck, brings a thermos of coffee and his Bible. Half hour before the construction starts, he just sits in the front seat of his pickup truck, absorbs the word of God, meets with God, surrenders himself with God, to God, asks for direction in his life. A young mom that I know goes to Starbucks whenever she can. Corner table, meets with God. Where's your chair? When you meet with a friend, let's say for a lunch, what happens is, if you've connected with that friend, after you leave the restaurant or wherever it is, 
You think about that friend later on in the afternoon. When you meet with God, you think about him more throughout the course of your day. His presence lingers after the meeting. Where's your chair? That was Bill Hybels, and you can find that clip on YouTube if you search under Bill Hybels Coffee with God. You can find out more information about him and his church. His church is actually in Chicago, and it's called Willow Creek, and the address of that is willowcreek.org. Well, that is all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this message, and I pray and hope that you will go find your chair and just spend time every day getting to know God better. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.